the Big Ten and the SEC, I think they're right on this. Get ready for the three-point stance. Three different minds, three different opinions, three dudes talking ball. It's Kenton. It's Jay. It's Zach. Time to bring the heat, boys. It's the three-point stance. Zach Blackerby, Jay Smith, Kenton Gibbs. Does James Franklin pick up that signature win at USC this weekend? How important is Ohio State and Oregon? We'll touch on those topics later on today's three-point stance. But, guys, yesterday, the SEC and the Big Ten met in uh, what is being described as an unprecedented meeting. They're discussing all of the changing landscape of college football. And yesterday, we talked about Project Rudy and some other things that could be coming in the way of this new era of college football that we're in. And Tony Patetti, the Big Ten commissioner, said something I thought was super interesting. And, I, and Kenton, I want to get your thoughts on it. He said, I have yet to see a single thing that any plan I've, I've learned details about that contains things that we couldn't do ourselves. And that's kind of my question in all of this is like all these big groups that are coming in with all this money saying, oh, we can help you. And the SEC and the Big Ten are saying like, do do we need your help? All right. We have to think through this logically, y'all, because did I not Mm. did I did I not say when we talked about this before? The only groups that will say no to this are the SEC and the Big Ten. You know why? Because the SEC and the Big Ten are telling us. It's all about love and hate. And let me tell you, I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way that they walk, the way that they talk. I hate the way that they dress. Let me explain to you how this works out, right? What the SEC and the Big Ten are saying is, we already are above you all. We have already created a delineation and a separation from you all. Aren't you all schools suing to make our kind of money? Why would we give everybody... Why would we allow everybody to make our kind of money? Don't get me wrong. I understand the leeriness around getting private equity involved in college football. I really do. I really and truly do. I understand. Trust me. Private equity almost ruined Cheddar Bay Biscuits. I will never forget private equity for that. You know, we can excuse some of the other things. I'm okay with paying $4 a gallon for gas. I'm lying. Please don't do that. But (laughs) you lost me the minute that you said endless script ain't coming back. That's crazy. But But with all due respect, you're looking at a situation where, again, I think that those two groups realize the money train will not always money train for everybody in the same way that it is now. And, again, it's not just about private equity. It's about the groups that are surrounding that private equity or partnering with them to say, listen, we're going to give this this uh, infusion of cash and all that, but we want to make sure that that infusion of cash goes to pushing the game forward, not holding it back. Yeah. But the SEC and the Big Ten are like, the game is heading in a good direction for us. I don't I don't know. I mean, we're just fine. Uh, oh, y'all poor and starving over there? That's unfortunate. Yeah, it appears that the SEC and Big Ten looked at this and said, So what are y'all going to do that we can't do ourselves? What are you doing that we can't just implement on our own? And I I was interesting the most in this article was that basically both ADs are saying, look, it's a struggle trying to get us two together. What makes you think we can get all four Mm. of these commissioners together easily to be able to figure this out? The next problem is scheduling. We've been trying to find ways to get everybody to schedule interconference games and play each other more often. It's right. not as easy as it sounds, which I get because a lot of these teams have contracts that they put out years from now. I mean, I know I know who Oklahoma, I know who Auburn, I know who North Carolina State's playing in 20, 20, 26, 20, 20, 36, almost 2046. Why? Because they put out these contracts so far in advance so that they can have some of these marquee matchups or at least hope the matchups that they play are marquee. I mean, the best example is Oklahoma's playing Temple on the road next year. That was put together back when Matt Rule was the head coach of Temple. Y'all remember those days? Temple was really pretty good. They're not good right now, but you still got to fulfill those contracts. So for the SEC and the Big Ten to try to put something together, I get why they are pushing back on all these groups because truth be told, what are any of them doing that they can't do themselves if they actually want to? Yeah. I also like I'm that sorry. they both go ahead, Ken. 
Oh, no, no, I, I just, I don't understand. 128 million over the duration of, of however long this thing lasts that, to each team? Uh, can they do that by themselves? Uh, that, I, it sounds good in theory. And by the time we get to 2031, I'm sure the numbers will inflate to where the Big Ten and SEC exactly. are close. Exactly. Again, I, I don't understand what the point of this is if we're looking at this and saying, hey, you're going to de facto leave half of the power four behind. And this isn't me making a plea as an ACC guy. I grew up in Big Ten country. I was one of the biggest fans ever of a Big Ten school. I get it. I understand. And I'm not sitting here saying, please help us, save us, uh, save us, accept us at any cost. What I am saying is the sport of college football will see a much bigger delineation between the haves and the have-nots. And to me, that would take away from what makes college football special and amazing. To me, it, it just really would, especially with NIL leaving and these contractual agreements showing up. Now, all of a sudden, the scholarship limits keep increasing and these contractual agreements are there. Kids are going to look at this and say, it doesn't matter if I can play here and make it to the NFL. Instant gratification. The same way that Kendrick Perkins is, is, is benefiting right now in a very meaningful and negative way off of these kids needing instant gratification. These schools will do the same thing. Say, Listen, you can go over there and be the star. You can go over there and be the star. Ooh. If you come over here, you might be a starter, and we can pay you three times what they pay. Now, now let's talk about it. Let's talk. You can't pay mama with starter bucks over there. You can pay mama with what we got over here. You can pay granddaddy, brother, sister, father, uncle, cousin. You can pay all of them over here. For some of the kids, I mean, every kid, like, every recruitment is different just because you don't know exactly what their situation is and what's important to them and, and all of that. So I will push back on that to some extent, but as a blanket statement, yeah. like th there is probably some some truth to that. But Kenton, you've got to agree with the SEC and the Big Ten's mindset of, okay, like, well, let's hold on because as soon as you left this money in, as soon as the, the two most powerful men in college sports say, you know what? Yeah, let's listen to some of the big money. I mean, it's, it's the whole analogy of like, once the toothpaste is out of the tube, you're not putting it back in. I, I like how cautious they are with this. Hey, listen, I like how cautious they are, too. And I would I'm not upset at them for having reservations. I think that's normal. And also, we're a long way away from anybody's TV deal being up. So I'm not saying, hey, these yeah. two are gluttonous pigs and they're looking down at everybody else and all that type of stuff. But what I am saying is, hey, I appreciate a good gatekeep. OK, I appreciate it. Things easily earned are lightly esteemed. And that also applies to money. Right. When people give it out freely, when people give it out wantonly. It absolutely, you can see some problems and things go wrong there. But with that in mind, by the time that we hit that 2031 mark, I think that everybody looking up at this game will know, wait a minute now, this, this looks a little different than what yeah. we were supposed to have it look like. Because if I would have told you two years ago, hey, national letters of intent are going to leave and contractual agreements are going to step in, you would have said, oh, that sounds a little off. That sounds a little off. And mind you, NIL was in that in, in the thing at that time. So yeah. going forward in the future, six to seven years from now, we don't know what the landscape of college football will look like. But what I do know is if the delineation and if the difference grows, if there is a very clear spin and narrative that is always going on around these schools, if there is a moment in which we look up at college football and say, are we watching Major League Baseball in our – are the Yankees all in one conference? Did we put 12 Yankees in one conference? Did that just happen? I believe that there will be a very different sentiment than what we're currently seeing. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. All right, so let, let's look at some of the biggest games this weekend. Ohio State heads to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. How important is this game? Is it as important as a two versus three should be? That's coming up on three-point stands. Guys, today's show is brought to you by Z-Biotics. Can you imagine, in this day and age, waking up after a night uh, filled with uh, with some several drinks, as we drink responsibly, all of us do, not feeling hungover? I mean, that that is, that is what Z-Biotics brings to the table. Step one, you drink the pre-alcohol, which is a Z-Biotics. Step two, you drink responsibly. And step three, you enjoy 
tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on college to learn more to get a 15% off your first order when you use code locked on college at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a hundred percent money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for uh 15% off. Today's show is also brought to you by FanDuel. Jay and Kenton, I wanted to hit you guys with a few just rapid fire uh, FanDuel picks. Tell me where you're leaning. Let's start with 16 Utah taking on Arizona State. Utah, six and a half point favorite. Where are you going, Jay? Cam Rising is back, if I'm correct, and I'm going to go ahead and ride with them Utes. I think I am too, Kenton. The real is back. The veal is back. Flo Banana is here. Peel this back. Cam Rising is back. In the thing, give me Arizona State. Give me the Sun Devils to pull off an upset. They've been playing amazing balls. I love that so much. Number seven, Alabama taking on South Carolina. Can they bounce back? Alabama, a 21 and a half point favorite, according to FanDuel. Jay? Yeah. Yeah, Vegas is giving them that big number because they know that this is the bounce back game. They were embarrassed last week. Give me them roll tide. Yeah, I, I think so too. Ken, you disagree with us on this one as well? My grandmother would, would have her. She would have some very choice words for me if I picked against the Tide. I think the Tide, get right, church, and let's go home. I'm not sure if they cover, but I know they win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a big number for sure. Hey, you can get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's over at FanDuel.com. So Ohio State heads to Oregon. Both teams 5-0 and on the season. Both teams 2-0. and in the Big Ten, we've seen some teams struggle on these cross-country Big Ten road trips that we've seen. And, and that was kind of the big question and speculatory response when it's like, okay, all these West Coast teams are now in the Big Ten. What does that look like? I like the Ducks in this game largely for that reason. And also, I, I'm not quite sold on Ryan Day as a head coach at this <clears throat> point. But I think when you zoom out of this game, I think both of these teams are in the playoff anyway. So I'm kind of pressing the pause on this to saying, like, is this really that big of a game in the grand scheme of things when the outcome I don't think is going to matter? I know the one thing that we've been asking for is big games like this. We've been asking for marquee matchups throughout the season. We've been asking for games that matter. Zach, I think you have a point here that both of these teams most likely will still end up in the playoffs. But if one of them see an upset, because remember, both of them still have to play Michigan. Sure. And if I'm correct, Ohio State still has to play Penn State. Sure. So you've got a lot of games in between there that could knock you off. Now, this is marquee team. This is Ohio State. They typically only lose to Michigan. That's their Achilles heel. That That is the thing that that's their kryptonite over yeah. the last three years, that is. But they're also a team. They're the rivalry that matters. So playing that game at the end of the season, it's going to be a big one. Oregon, they're the new kids on the block, and their goal is to go in there and slap around some of these old legacy Big Ten teams and let them know, hey, the Ducks are here. The old pack is taking over. We're making this the new pack in some way, even though we not in the pack. They're going to try to find a way to do this. I don't think that this game doesn't matter, but I do think that it brings additional intrigue for the season because the best part about the 12 game is whenever you get past the four, all those other games still matter because people are still trying to work for that home field advantage. They want to have that late home game. Sure. They even want to just slide in there and make it into the actual playoff bid in general it's an at large. So you still need style points. You still need signature wins. And I think this is a great direction for college football. Yeah. Ken, who wins this game? Let me tell you something. I think Oregon wins this game in a close one. I would not be shocked by any outcome except except a very low scoring game. That's the only thing that would shock me here. Both of these teams have offenses that can light it up. However, to the greater point here that you were saying about, is this game now meaningless? And does this mean less than the two, three traditionally did? Absolutely. Absolutely. We can't. There's not a world where you can argue this game means as much as back in the day when two and three played each other. If there was a shellacking, somebody was gone. There was nothing you could do to recover. 
and say, hey, we're, we're still a really good team. It was only them that laid the lumber to us. Well, the, the committee was, or the uh, the BCS by the computers or the committee when it was four teams would have said, well, that's unfortunate. Them boys took you to lumber liquidators. We can't have that in the playoff or we can't have that in the BCS national championship. And now we're looking at such a different world because Oregon, I don't think, can afford to lose this game and losing the, the Big Ten championship because I don't think that they have the same resume and schedule that uh, Ohio State would have necessarily. After this game, Ohio State has number four, number 18, number 24, all still on the schedule. And yeah. number that number 24 is the number 24 with a block M on. We all know it hits a little different. There are certain brands in college football that even when it, it shouldn't mean as much as it does, it just hits a little different. So I look at this and I say to myself, we have absolutely lost some of the relevance there, but I don't think we've lost the plot because like y'all said, there are multiple games coming down the pipe for both of these teams where if you are tripped up and upset by some of these lesser opponents, if you're tripped up and you're in Ohio State and you lose to Iowa, right, that's a very different situation now. It's like y'all told me about uh, the Ole Miss game yesterday. It's not a big game unless you lose it. Unless you it lose it, the right. Game in the world. So well, it, it just, I, it just, I, uh, just I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Oregon plays Michigan too. You know, they, they go to Ann Arbor. Right. Illinois is ranked currently. Do they stay ranked? If they obviously if they drop a game, they're going to fall out of there. And then they finish the season with Washington, which I think Washington will be ranked by the end of the season when you look at what they have in front of them. So I mean, it's not like Oregon has like the easiest schedule in the world to wrap up the year. I mean, no, looking like at this, uh, easy, it's not the same. They they don't, but at the same time, kind of the kitten's point. You lose a certain game, you you are in the BCS yeah. era, you would be out when actually USC lost to Cal at the beginning of the season in 2003 and still played and won, won the Rose Bowl against number four, you know, Michigan, right? You, you'll, you'll still have the opportunity to go to some of these games the same way you would, but now that Rose Bowl actually matters. That actually means something. Yeah. That is what you see different because, yeah, you're gonna teams are going to trip up. We've seen teams lose one game to a team that you shouldn't have lost. By them losing that game and, co and, and continue the season, you know, unscathed, the BCS was still very um, – very nice to you if you if you lost early. It was only if you lost late when this when the games mattered super much. So you could lose the opening game of the season and still play in the BCS championship game. We've seen that before. I I, I don't like the idea that if we don't have we have less marquee games, it's not gonna it 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 matters or does it matter? Especially if you because it's not a big game unless you lose it, right? If you lose to the wrong team. Yeah, sure. In this scenario, but, but, that sorry, guys, end of season I, I, game matters. Go ahead. I, I, I just want to be clear because y'all seem to both be disagreeing, and I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. If Oregon loses to Ohio State and takes care of business the rest of the way and then loses in the Big Ten Championship to probably Ohio State again, y'all don't think they're in? Because I, I think they're in in that situation. If they take care of business the rest of the way and lose to Ohio State, they got a very good chance. I, I think yeah, they'd have two, two losses, losses. You're in. But but they both beat Ohio State, which would be the yeah. what number two team in the country, probably at that point. Yeah, as long as Ohio State ain't lost in between her, yeah. Now you got to rely on other people. To, sure, exactly, it, and that's and that's that's what I mean in terms of the. It's not just about hey the two loss situation because don't get me wrong, I a thousand percent would agree that hey Ohio State loses this this game twice, they get in brand name all that good stuff. Oregon might, most likely does as well because now they're in the Big Ten. Now they're it's a it's a different it's a different yeah. situation. Your your losses get weighted differently. It it just again it just feels different in the Big Ten. So Oregon most likely gets in too, and that's why I say it doesn't have the traditional feel of a top ten game because there it, there aren't very high stakes here. I think that we all agree that Oregon and Ohio State are by far and away the two best teams in the Big Ten. I don't think anybody would argue. Yeah, that's true. So with that, so with that in mind, you're but you absolutely love Penn right, State, Zach. You love Penn State. Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me, Zach. Don't don't disrespect but, me like that well, on this we're, issue. We're going there. We're going there in just a minute on uh, on the three point stance. Hey, today's show is brought to you by Robin Hood Gold. You don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the one percent. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. 
Now the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for just $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For product-specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risks. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. All right, let's talk about Kitten's favorite team, the coach that Kitten believes in more than anyone. James Franklin and the Penn State Nittany Lions are heading across the country to take on USC. It's not a Rose Bowl. It's a regular conference game now wow. in this new era of the Big Ten. I think he gets his signature win as head coach of Penn State this weekend on the road against the Trojans. Got a question. Hit me. Does this count as a signature win with the way that USC has been playing? Thank you. That's the Can we you. give him that? Can we give him that? Because I posed this question initially because the one problem we've seen with James Franklin is these are the type of games they typically trip up in. But with the way USC is playing and the way Lincoln Riley is viewed by the, by the people, yeah. is this considered a marquee game? Can we give them... The marquee game says, is this the signature win that James Franklin needs to get the hump off his back? Because Franklin's had some wins. He's just not good about beating teams when they're ranked. And unfortunately for him, USC is not ranked. So it kind of takes away a little bit of the luster, if you want me to be honest. Yeah. I mean, unless Penn State just totally trips all over themselves, their only ranked team on the schedule somehow is Ohio State. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And so I, I think you make and we'll see if Washington's ranked by then. They actually might be. They play on November 9th. So there's there's a chance that Washington's ranked by then. But somehow Penn State has been given this super manageable schedule within the Big Ten to where as long as they don't throw up all over themselves, uh, I, I think the game against USC does represent something. I think it represents of uh, hey, they're now in a position to do enough to be a top 12 team and make the college football playoff. Represents what? The game against USC. A USC team that lost to Michigan. Do you know how many passes Michigan threw in that game? 12. Not Michigan, many. Had le Michigan had less passing yards in that game than Zach Blackerby has years on this earth. Congratulations, y'all. Michigan had 32 passing yards in that game. 32. That's it. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, Zach, but I know that you. I, I'm not. I'm not 32, so. Oh, take that okay. for what it's worth. I take that for what it's worth. <laughs> take that for what it's worth, and I'm gonna take it for what this win is worth, and, and I'm gonna take this for what this win is worth, which is not a damn thing. This team has to show me something against a top 25 squad. Let's hit you with the facts about James Franklin. And I hurt. It hurts me to do this because I want to believe in Penn State. I feel like Motor it, it does not Scully, hurt you. It does not hurt you I to do this. Oh, okay, it doesn't hurt me to do this. I, 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 I vehemently disagree, but here we go. Top 25 teams, 12 and 25. Top 10 teams, 3 and 17. Michigan, 4 and 16. I'm sorry, Ohio State, 4 and 16. Michigan, 1 and 3rd damn team. This is not a big game. This is, this is not the game that trips up James Franklin because this is the game that James Franklin always wins. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, I, I believe it was The Comebacks, where Carl Withers is, is screaming at the character that's Lambeau Fields, and he said, I hired you to lose because that's what you do. You lose. James Franklin, they're not hiring you to lose these big games. Go win one, but this ain't a big game. He's going to win because that's what he does. He beats up on inferior opponents. And it's be so funny if USC goes out there and pulls out this W and knocks that number four team right back down. Ooh. This is why I hate rankings before the fourth or fifth week because we would not have put Penn State this high up because, like as Ken mentioned, 
They beat up on all the teams on the schedule that they always beat up on. And they yeah. do not play anybody with a pulse for the most part. Besides Ohio State, we'll give Washington pulse action because they did beat Michigan, even though Michigan technically doesn't have a pulse either. They don't really play anybody this entire season. So they're going to skate right into the Big Ten championship game. And then we're going to ask ourselves, is Penn State for real? The funny part is when they lose to one of these random teams on this list, then we're going to be like, why is Penn State frauds? As if they haven't always been that way. Yeah, and and then nobody will be more excited than our own uh, Kenton Gibbs. So there's that. There's hey, that. listen, I love being right. I love being right, but I hate to see downfalls of cast technicians. Okay, uh, I, I always root for my boys that wore the green and white. You know, it, it always it hits different. You know, what I mean, it, it's very few it's public schools now, true public schools, not oh, sure. we're kind of public that doing what we're doing in terms of putting players in college and putting players in leagues. So I, I never want to root against my tech. I never do. I never do. The King brothers were fantastic. They were fantastic at Cal State. They were fantastic at Penn State. I don't want this to be the case. I hope I'm wrong, but I just know I synced it. I synced it. And the greatest predictor of future behaviors is the past. So I'm going to count on James Franklin do what he's done in the past, and he's going to whoop some Trojan tape. But yeah. when he looks up against the real team, all of a sudden, them knees going to get a little shaky. going to be like SWV because my heart starts beating triple time with yeah. thoughts of loving you on my mind. He's not going to be able to yeah. do it. He's going to get weak in the knees. He's going to get weak in the knees. I hardly speak. Penn State's a four-point favorite. Where are you guys going with this, according to our friends at FanDuel? I think they win that cover. I think they win that cover. I I, I as well. I think Penn State's defense is good enough to be able to pull that out. I'm – I. Some of us are sold on Miller Moss. Others are not. I'm still in the middle. I still need more data. Give me more data, and then I can give you determination. But right now, a lot of people want Lincoln Riley fired, and I can totally understand why. Hey, a, a potential outcome of this game, if if Penn State does win this, one, they are going to be talking about Lincoln Riley on the hot seat. I don't know if I buy it, but that, that discussion will happen. Another one, get ready for all the tampering of Miller Moss. Get ready for that. That will be one of the hottest transfer portal rumors leading up to the December transfer portal window uh, this season. That, that to me is intriguing. Hey, listen, college football coaches, you got to get on your zoom for Miller Moss 10 a.m. Every day, get on your zoom, baby. Cause I'm telling you, if he is, if he is indeed to hit the portal, that will be one of the hottest portal commodities in quite some time. And I mean that including Cam Ward, who's a Heisman candidate right now, who is legitimately a superstar that everybody and their mama wanted, and there were M's on the table for him. I think Miller Moss may even exceed that type of hype. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of curious if Miller Moss is going to actually be worth it, too. I mean, we've seen some of these high-profile names hit the portal, and a lot of them have not panned out. Granted, Cam Ward is in his fifth year of college football, so it kind of makes sense. There's more experience there. Miller Moss ain't got that experience that a player like that has, but we're willing to throw them M's at him like that? I mean, look at Kyle McCord up there at Syracuse. I mean, not bad, but is he all that great? That's the example you used? I mean, is he's Kyle one of the examples. Turning, turning around that Syracuse program? That's the, that's the one you went with? Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean he, he's he one of the many of high profile passes. names. Dude, he, he, he is he one of the lead passers in the nation. What do you mean? Yeah, he's he's kind of cooking. He's kind of cooking right I now. I mean, Will he's Rogers kinda... is too up there at uh at Washington, but are we talking about him in the same accord? No, but you said you said I'm, like, I'm just saying portal quarterbacks haven't always panned I'm, out, and then you pick the one who's like turning a you, program. You could have went with my you could have went with my former starting quarterback and Grayson McCall. I mean, you sure, he's on the list. You, you got Sam Hartman. Guy. You got Grant Riley Hurts. Leonard. You know the list is long. There you go. There you go. I, I like that list for that hey, example. We're not, than we're not gonna mention. Out. We're not gonna mention Peyton Thorne. We're not even gonna talk about Peyton Thorne and what he's been. He's we been a thorn in a full show. We almost went through a full <laughs> show without y'all throwing shade my way. Whatever. Y'all have a fantastic weekend. This has been the three point stance. Thank you so much for making us. Your first listen every single day. For your second listen, go check out our buddy Spencer McLaughlin, host of Locked On College Football, on the same YouTube channel or same audio feed. For Kenton Gibbs and Jay Smith, I'm Zach Blackerby. This has been the Three Point Stance.